everyone. I'm excited to be here today to be demoing our new DevOps Center, which is the central application to be delivered with our new DevOps solution. This first version of the DevOps Center will provide an improved UI-based experience around change and release management that will not only deliver a modern and robust experience for declarative developers and admins, but will also allow for collaboration between declarative and programmatic developers throughout the DevOps process. What you're looking at here is the work items tab of DevOps Center. Here you can see a list of work items, which are like tickets that define the requirements of the changes to be made. The work item is a central object in the flow as it's what the actual changes are tied to and tracked against as they move through the release process. To start the development process, we'll select the work item that defines the change that we'll be making. In this case, it's the work item entitled Add Days on Market Component to Property Explorer page. We now see that the work item status is shown as in progress, and we can start making our changes by clicking on the Launch Dev Environment button. This will open up a developer sandbox where we can do our development. The sandbox is synchronized with the source from our connected source control repository to ensure that we're developing against the latest source of truth. We're developing against a real estate application called DreamHouse. This is one of the sample designs that we provide in our sample design gallery. Now recall that the change that was defined in the work item was to add a days on the market component to the Property Explorer page. So we'll open up the Property Explorer page in the application and then select Edit Page from the Setup menu. This will open up the Lightning App Builder where we can see the Days on Market Lightning Web component, which we'll drag onto the lower right section of the page. We'll then click Save and then Back to go back to the Property Explorer page to verify the change that we just made. We can now see the Days on Market component on our Property Explorer page. And when we select one of the property cards, we can see that the component updates as we'd expect. So at this point, we're done making and verifying our change and so we're ready to proceed with moving the changes along in the release process. So to do this, we'll go back to the DevOps Center to continue with the change and release management process. Now that we're back in the DevOps Center and still looking at our work item, we can select Pull Changes to pull the changes that we just made in the Developer Sandbox. This is super handy as we, we don't need to manually keep track of the changes as we're making them, nor do we need to sift through lists of components to find the components that we want to migrate. Now, once our changes have all been pulled and shown to us in this UI, we still have the ability to decide which of these files we really want to migrate forward in the process. In some cases, we may not want to migrate all the files that have changed. For instance, we may choose to not migrate profiles or other components that maybe we changed as we were trying things in the org, but that didn't end up being part of the final change. In this case, we do see that a profile component was modified, and we're going to choose to not migrate that as part of this work item. So all we need to do is simply click Ignore next to the component to remove it from the list of changes that we're tracking here. So now that we've got our list of changes that we want to move forward in the process, we can proceed with the next step, which is to submit the changes. Now before we actually click Submit, we'll add a description and a comment describing the change that we made to help document and track the change. And then, we'll, and then we'll click the Submit Changes button to submit these changes to the next stage of the flow. We can now see that the work item reflects that it's in the In Review stage of the flow, and we can see a history of the change submissions that we've made now for this work item. So let's talk about what actually just happened when we submitted those changes. Behind the scenes, the tool committed and pushed the metadata source files into a branch in our connected GitHub repository and also created a pull request. We haven't had to run any GitHub commands or really even know anything about GitHub to be able to push these changes into the source control system to facilitate synchronization and collaboration with other team members and back up our source files. So this is pretty cool. And so if we click on View in GitHub, we can see the new branch that's been created for this work item and the pull request in GitHub. Now at this point, we're going to shift into a programmatic developer persona who will review these changes and deploy them to the downstream org. We will eventually support the full end-to-end -end flow in the UI-based DevOps Center, but in this first iteration, the process of deploying the changes is done through a programmatic interface, which we'll go through next. 
Now we're logged into GitHub as a different user, acting as another team member who will review our change. We can take a look at the change file to review it, then add a review comment, and finally merge the changes from this branch into the master branch. Now we'll go to the CLI where we've already cloned the project's GitHub repository and we'll pull the source files out of the master branch that we just merged to into the local directory here to prepare to deploy to the production environment. Once we have the source files in our local project directory, we can then deploy them to our production org using the source deploy command. So through this demo, we've just shown how we can go through the full process of starting with a work item in the DevOps Center, making the change in a developer sandbox, identifying and managing the change, submitting the change to GitHub via the DevOps Center, then reviewing and merging the change, and ultimately deploying the change to our production environment. And with that, I thank you very much for watching, and I hope this gets you excited for what we have coming in the area of Salesforce DevOps.